Hello, we're going to look at the SewerCAD Quick Start Lessons for the Connect Edition. And this is the lesson one that we're going to be going through, creating a schematic network. This is a network we're going to create. So I already have SewerCAD open over here. And we're going to create a new hydraulic model. And now while it's opening up, what I'm going to do is file. What I want to do is save it as quick start. Oh, let's cancel that. I want to file. Save it as lesson number one. And now I've changed that over here. And if I come back over here to file and info, I can now put in my information. That's lesson number one. The engineer is going to be me, Mike Shook. And we're going to have the company as Gateway Tech Call College. I come back. My information is all set now. So what I'm going to do is come over here and I've done this one over here. Put the information down in. Now I'm going to come in and go over here to the hydraulic model options and be able to enter in this information over here because we're going to not use a scaled model. We're going to use a schematic. We're going to have the units as being metric rather than English. So we're going to go ahead and get that started. I'm coming back over here to my sewer CAD. And oops, where that file and then down over here should be where I could put my options. Now I have global in my hydraulic model. My drawing is not going to be scaled. I'm going to make it schematic. My units, I'm going to Make sure my default is all the metric. I should have everything in metric. And I can click OK. And so what I've done is I've done all this over here. And I'm coming up as that my drawing is now schematic. And my units are all metric. And now I'm going to draw the skeletonized sewer network using the layout tool. So I come over here. And here's my layout. Now the first one I have is manhole number one. And I'm going to come down over here. And I'm going to make a few changes. I'm not going to have another manhole over here. I'm going to do a right click. I have conduit manhole. I want to make a wet well. And then I can go ahead and click in here. Now with a wet well on the outlet, I'm going to have a pressure pipe. So I'm going to Come down over here to a pressure pipe. I also need to make it a pump. And I can put 
put that in over here. Now on my next leg of it is I have to have a another pressure pipe and a pressure junction. So I'm going to come over here to pressure pipe, pressure junction, and come over here. Now I've got that done. And then I'm going to come out from there. I'm going to make a outfall. And then I'm going to call it done. So now I have the first part of the system all outlined here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to select so that I no longer am drawing things. The next portion of this, I'm going to add in my next manhole. And I'm going to split this over here, make it a transition. So I come back over here to my layout. I have my manhole that I'm putting in. And then I'm going to do is go conduit and transition. And when I pick over here, it says, do I want to split conduit number one? I'm going to go yes. And I can go and say I'm done. And now I have the outline of my sewer system that I'm going to model. So if I come back to the quick start lessons, this is what I have. But instead of calling it CO1 and CO2, it's CO1 parentheses 1 and 2. But everything else is basically the same as you see over here. So now I'm going to go ahead and enter the information in. So I have this one done. I'm going to enter data. There's a variety of ways of being able to enter it. And I have properties editor, flex tables, alternative editors, and such. So we're going to enter data through the properties editor. And what we're going to do first is open up the outfall and put this information in. So we're going to have a elevation at 16, rim elevation at 16, invert at 14, and with a free outfall. So we're going to have to click on outfall number one. It's the only one that we have. Again, we have to go to select. I'm going to double click here and I bring up this table. So now we're going to enter our data in, and what I need to do is look at, well, I'm going to expand this so I can see a little bit better. So what I'm looking for is my ground elevation. Let's see, where is my information over here? Whoops, I'm going to get rid of that. So my ground elevation is right over here. That should be 16. What is the problem over here? There we go. Had, didn't I have my num locks on? So now I have my realm elevation also set at 16 and my invert elevation at 14. So if I come down over here, next thing I want to do is I want to look at my manholes. So I have manhole number one. And the information I have to enter in is my ground elevation is going to be 11.1. .1. My rim elevation is also 11.1. .1. I should enter it in. My invert elevation is going to be 9. And over here, rather than having 
914.4, I have a thousand millimeter. My head loss method is going to be not absolute. I want to have my method as standard and my head loss is coefficient is going to be 0 0.25. So now I'm going to go and enter the same type of information in for manhole number two. And what I need to do is right over here and ground elevation again is going to be 11.1 .1. it's going to set my rim elevation and this is going to be nine this is a thousand millimeters and my head loss method is going to be standard and 0 0.25 so now i have that and next thing i'm going to do is look at doing my transition so what i'm doing is i'm coming down over here i just sent this in now i have a ground elevation of 12 a elevation on top of it as 11 and invert so i'm going to enter all this information in for the transition so I come back over here to sewer CAD and I'm coming into here looking for my transition which is right over here and my elevation is going to be not 112 I want 12 my elevation at the top is going to be 11. My Ernvert elevation I put in here is 9.2. My transition length is going to be 1. And I'm going to go, come down here again. It's going to be standard. And it's going to be 0 0.5. So I have now entered my transition data in, which should be 12, 11, 1 for the transition length, the invert elevation as 9.2 standard and 0 0.5 and now the wet well I'm going to come down and specify it so my wet well over here is my base elevation is going to be 6 minimum elevation is 6 so this is going to give me the distance that that's going to allow the <coughs> water to travel up and down before it starts to pump it out. So my operating range is going to be elevation. So let me find it over here. Operating range is not going to be level. It is going to be an elevation. My elevation base is going to be six. My elevation minimum is going to be also six. My elevation initial is going to be eight. And then my maximum elevation is going to be 10. Looking over here is my section is going to be circular, which is already specified. Diameter is going to be 3 meters. I'm going to change this to 3. And then my elevation on the ground is 10.5.
So where's my elevation ground over here? We're going to look for that. Need to have that at 10.5. So here's my elevation ground now as 10.5 what happens if I pick true I just leave that the way it was there's my elevation and all that data now we're going to look at coming over here and specifying the pump definitions so I can close out of this I've already specified these components so I'm going to come over here to the components portion of this. And what I need to do is look at the pump definitions dialog. I'm coming over here to this. And we're going to now specify the pump. So if I come over here and look at this, what I've done is I've Come over here and pump definitions, click the components tab, select the pump definitions, and we're going to click new and create PMP-1. So over here is new, and we're going to put PMP-1. Pump. Now what it's asked for is the flow on the shutoff is zero. The head is going to be 53 point, oops, that was not the right cell, 53.33. This is 0 0.25. This one is going to be 40 max. Operating flow is going to be 0 0.5. And then the maximum head over here is 0. And now it's showing up the pump curve, which is what you get right over here. So now we're going to double click PMP1 to enter the properties in the properties editor so click over here close this one out i'm going to double click this and now i can put in my properties and what i have is a elevation at the ground of six meters invert elevation of six and my pump definition is going to be pmp1 so over here is I've got my ground elevation. I want to make this six. This one is six. My pump definition, instead of being none, is going to be PMP1. And I want to ignore on and off elevations, which is going to be false. Let's see over here, elevation off is 6.5. Let's see over here, where is my, here we go. I'm going to leave this as false. This one is going to be 6.5. Elevation on is going to be 9.5. 9.5. Enter that in. And we want to check is that we have two pipes associated with it. I'm going to move this out of the way over here. We have, this should be P1 coming in, P2 leaving, which is what the instructions say. So we should be good. And just to let you know, right over here is, note that the pump has a upstream downstream pipe, which I just talked about. And... We're going to enter an elevation of 13 meters 
for the pressure junction and a ground elevation of 14.2. I'm coming over here now. I have to find my pump. Coming over here to my junction. And what I need to do is provide a elevation of 13 meters. And the elevation of the ground is going to be at 15.2. And so we're finished with these. So now I'm done. I have things all specified. Now we're going to look at entering data through the flex tables, which is the next item up. We come back over here to the quick start lessons. Here's through the flex tables. So we're going to go to the View tab, and we're going to look at flex tables. And over here we have flex tables for the conduit, pressure pipe, manholes, and such. So, first thing we're going to do is look at the conduit. We click on the conduit table. There we go. Now, all the things that are highlighted in yellow are items that we have no ability to enter into information into. All these other items in white I can. I have a slider bar across the bottom and if I need to add things I can zoom in. Here's paste, copy, and over here where is my add? As edit over here I can click on this and if there's things that I don't have over here I can take, click this, move it over, and add items if I need to. So let's see what do we need to do on my conduit. If I come back. What I want to do is have all this information. Let's come back over here. I want to have the flex table and for conduit number one which is this one over here this is two and three it just has a little bit different way of numbering them here i could change that if i want to but we're just going to leave it this way for the time being and we want to set invert to start indeed set invert to stop yes we want to do that we want to have conduit type as user defined. So let's find conduit, uh, sorry, conduit type as, uh, here we go, user defined. We want to have the section as being circular, which it is. Uh, we want the material to be concrete, so I'm going to come over here to concrete. I'm sorry to add in concrete, or I can also type in C. Oh, that's cast iron. I actually have to come down over here and specify it. So I'm coming in and telling it in each case it's concrete by Manning's numbers. The friction factor are 0 0.013, which is fine. My diameters, I'm going to make this as 200, type that in, enter, 200 and enter, and 200 and enter, user defined length. So over here is, yes, I've defined that. And now I want to have for this one is 100. I can do 70. And then what I want for the last one is to be 100. And if I come back here, I believe I've done all of these items. Just as a little bit easier way of entering the data in. And again, is that if I wanted to edit something, I could come over here. And let's just say that I wanted to add it in um the 
let me see, there's something innocuous over here. Elevation, minimum tailwater, I could just click over here and it would add it. So if I click OK, that's the last item over here. And it would be elevation tailwater. And if I wanted to get rid of it, and come down over here and do elevation tailwater and remove it. If I wanted to take something and move it, for example, if I want to move Manning's N and put it above the diameter, I just click this, I click OK, and now I've changed where the Manning's is at. So now I've done that one. I'm going to get out of the conduit table. Next thing I want to do is go over and get the pressure pipe. And pressure pipe information is going to be right over here. So let's go ahead and enter the data for the pressure pipe. And pressure pipe table. And I've got P1, 2, and 3. And I'm going to come over here as unit user defined length. I'm going to go, yep, all of these. And my user defined length in this case for one is going to be one foot, I uh, sorry, one meter. Over here is going to be 200. And then 100. My diameter on all these is going to be 200, 200, and 200. My material is going to be ductile iron, which I could just hit D. And now I've got all that specified. So what I also have to have over here is a Hazen Williams C, which is 130. So yes, that's all in there already. And I have to have an invert start and stop. So where is my invert start and stop? So over here, I already have a information entered in as invert start at 6 and 6, 6 and 13, 13 and 14. So let me go back and double check on that. So there it is, 13, 14, 6, and 13, which is all that's needed on there. So now I have that information entered in. I can get out of my conduit tables. And what do I need to do next is, okay, I got my gravity pipes what I need to do next is entering infiltration data for gravity pipes so we're going to account for the infiltration of the conduit pipe by double clicking on conduit one two and three so let's go ahead and do that so as I mentioned we're going to get rid of flex tables this is I'll hit escape here to get rid of that. This is CO1, CO2, and CO3. In the quick start lessons, I'm just leaving it as the program defined it. If I double click on this one over here, I now have my table opened up. So what I'm going to be looking at over here is conduit infiltration data. Here's my infiltration. As the infiltration type, this has none. Well, I don't want none. I want this is the I and I inflow and infiltration. And this should be hmm. That one's not giving me the right one. So let's see, I need to have, let's see where I need to find this at. Double click on it, change the infiltration load type to pipe length. So 
So let's see, where do I find that at? And let me just take a look. Whoop. We don't want that happening. So we're going to double click on this again. And infiltration load type is what we wanted to do. And I want to make that as pipe length and loading unit is going to be in meters no i don't want thousands of feet i wanted meters infiltration loading infiltration rate per loading unit and i don't want it in liters per second Actually, I want this one as in that over here. This is supposed to be in liters per day. Length. So I'm going to get out of this over here. And go back to file and options in my units. I want to go for infiltration rate. I want that in. Where is leaders? So my units, leaders. Infiltration rate, millimeters. All right, well, let's go back to this one here. Loading unit. Infiltration rate per loading unit. This has got it in liters per second. Hmm. Set pipe length. I've got this as in meters, no, not miles. I want this in meters. So this is in liters per day. So I go back to this right over here is in liters per day. I'm going to need to change that, but uh, I come over to my calculator. And instead of, where's that liters per distance? Now we're going to just put it in as the 0 
and see what happens. No, it doesn't make any sense. I got 0 0.25. No, we're just going to see what happens. 0 0.25. That's for conduit number one. We're going to come down over here to conduit two and do the infiltration and in seepage. We're going to do this on pipe length. The loading unit is going to be in meters. This one for two is going to be 0 0.05. And for our last conduit over here, the infiltration is going to be in pipe length. This one again is going to be in meters and 0 0.03. So now I've entered this data in. Steady state loading, this is going to be looking at what happens when you have load coming in during dry weather. So this is where we're going to be specifying what type of buildings are adjacent to it. Sewer CAD defines the load for each of the buildings. So like this one over here is looking at a, let's see, sewer CAD defines loads by unit sanitary dry weather load and the loading unit count. The unit loading represents the amount of load per a given unit. For example, in average income housing, each resident contributes 200 liters per day to the sanitary sewer. And then we have the loading unit count is the number of units. So we're going to go ahead and specify that. We're going to come over here to looking at putting that information in and we're going to be applying it to manholes but first we're going to click on components and select the unit sorry the loading in the unit sanitary dry weather so let's go back we can click on this so we're going to come over here to components And we're going to look at loading. And loading over here is coming down over here to wanting to select the unit sanitary dry weather loads. Click on that. And now we have this coming up over here. And we're going to look at this one over here is some information that we can enter in. This one is where we're going to pick over here for the import from the library. We're going to expand this and then this. And we have some defined units that we're going to put in. So we're going to pick an apartment. We're going to pick a average home. We're going to pick home better. We also need to get a residential hotel right over here. We need to get a resort. And what other stuff do we need? It's going to be a school and it's going to be a medium one. So we'll click that. Shopping center per employee. Oop, that's swing per shopping center per employee is right over here. And then a theater. I could click select for those. <coughs> and 
And you'll notice over here is that now it's giving you what the loading is for each particular person. This is on population per resident. So now if we come back here to our instructions, we've gotten that from the library. We've added all these things in. We now come down over here and it says note that the new loads are created. We can change those if we want to. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to get out of that. We're going to come down here to assigning these unit loads to a particular manhole. So we're going to close the box that we're in. So I can close this one. And now we're going to come over here to loading. And we're going to now come over here, I believe, to the which one are we going to get is the loading sanitary load control center. I'm clicking over here and I'm going to click yes to that. And when I come down over there, now come down the manhole tab, click the new button. So we're going to do that and then add in the manholes. So a manhole and new. And we're going to initialize for all elements. We have manhole one and manhole two. And then we can come down and begin entering the information in here. So we now have our apartment and then resort for manhole number two. So I'm gonna look at the apartment and then the resort. So if I slide over here is, I click on here, and it's going to be the apartment. And it gives us a count initially of 2,000. If I slide back over here, it's manhole number two. And it's going to want to have the resort. And it's also going to have over here is 2,000. And I entered that in. So then I'm going to add in additional information. If I come back over here, I'm going to have to add in all these items over here. So let's go ahead and do that. If I come back over here, I need to have a better home. So on this one over here, I'm going to add another unit load to element mh1 over here is if i look back at it i need to have a better home now i'm just going to go ahead and add those in so home and better and then the information that was provided is i need to have 2000 over there in manhole number two I come over here and add a, another element to MH2. And what I need to do there is add in the residential hotel. And there I have 1,000. So now then I have the remaining items are going to be my wet well and my junction. So let me go back. I'm coming over here to my wet well. I'm going to add in for all elements. So there's wet well number one. That's the only wet well I have. And what I need is to have a theater. And theater has 200 people for it. And then I need to do is add a sanitary load. Whoop, I need to do add a unit load for wet well number one. Its second one is going to be shopping center per employee. And I have over here is this one should be 
60. That one should be 200. And enter. And the last thing I need to do is add for my junction is I need for the school. And I'm coming over here to initialize unit loads for all elements. There's my junction. I have over here is coming down to the medium school. And over there for the medium school, I have 500. I'm going to hit enter. And now I can close the dialog box. I've got all my elements specified over here. And extreme load factors. Now, what we just did is under normal conditions, but under extreme loading is that we're going to enter that information in. So we're going to go to the components and select extreme flows. And we're going to go equation population factor. So let's go to components and extreme flows. And we're going to go to extreme flows over here. And we're going to drop down on our little arrow over here to equation population factor. And I'm going to enter the information I have. First is for population times 10 to the third. Per thousand, my cutoff value is going to be 5. This is going to be 0. And then I have 5 and 0. My E1 is going to be 1. My E2 is going to be 0 0.2. M1 is 0. And this one is going to be 1. So now I have all these inf all this information entered in. And what it wants me to call this one is change name. So I'm doing a right click, rename, and I'll call it Babbitt. B A B B I T T. And enter it in. And so what I've just done are entering in these factors. I've called it Babbitt. I can close the extreme flows dialog and I'm going to now enter the extreme flow setups. So I'm closing this one. The extreme flow setups. And what I'm going to do now is give it some context for the extreme flows for the different items that I have over here. So I'm going to click new and now I have for all of these, these are the extreme flows from the apartment, the average home, the better home, and everything I have. So what I can do over here is I can do a right click and do a global edit. And I can click over here is click OK, and it sets everything. This one over here, extreme flow method, I do a right click, global edit, and the value I want to have over here is going to be Babbitt. I click OK and it puts everything in here. And over here, my multipliers are all going to be 1. So I can close that. Now I've set that up. And again, I'm just following through with this information right over here. And in the calculation options, I'm going to go to home and options and I'm pick the extreme flow setup. So I'll come over here, home and options. I'm going to do a right click over here. Whoop. If I do a double click, I'm sorry. I come down over here and I've got CO-2. So over here is I'm looking at 
CO2 and my would correspond to CO-3 over here. I'm just going to give it the base extreme flow setup. So let me see. Extreme flow setup. It says none. I've now done that. The pattern for the setup is none. The steady state hydrograph is peak. So that's all done. And that should change it for all of them. So if I come over here to CO12, that again, and now I have for the extreme flow. Where did it go to? That should all be set up for it. I'm looking for, I don't see it real quickly but it does do it ah, here we go extreme flow setup it did do it for all of them so i can get out of that and now i'm going to click the validate button if you look over here next thing it says calculating the model and on the analysis tab click select options double click the base calculation options And we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're just going to do that to check that we have this at the steady state. So I'm going to go back over here, get rid of this. And we want to go to the analysis tab. And then double click on the base options. Base calculations. And over here is what was the double click the base calculation options. Well, select options. I want to do that. Double click this one over here. And what it wants me to do is to double check that the settings are. Time analysis type. And we're looking here for time analysis type. And looking for steady state. There we go. Time analysis type steady state. Which is correct. And the type is set to analysis. So we should be good there. And I can click out of this. You get rid of this. And we just completed this portion of it. And then we close the calculation options dialog. Click the validate button and to catch any input data errors and click validate. So we're coming over here to validate. We do have some errors. We have two problems. We have a conduit. This will be conduit two in the in tutorial. This is conduit three has invert adverse slope. So if I come back over here to view, come on to view, and I want to look at my flux tables, and I want to do the flux tables for the conduits. And it says adverse slope, so it has invert start and stop is nine nine point two. And then 99.2, what it's saying is that here's where it starts and here's where it stops. So it's running slightly uphill, which is the way that the problem was defined. We know that that's going to be a problem. And then we don't have any input errors because we did exactly what they asked for. And it says click the compute button on the analysis. 
And then we're going to come over here to home and compute. And this is going to give me pretty much the same information that was in the tutorial. In detail calculation executive summary, it was achieved, but there's yellow indicators that these are just warnings. And you can double click each warning to zoom the element that is creating it. And that's lesson number one completed. The next one that we'll look at is doing some automatic calculations. So this one is automatic design, but right now I'm going to come back over here. This is the information I got from running the model. And what I can do is I can do file and save. I have lesson number one and I can turn in. Now if I have lesson number one, is that where it's going to be located, I can do as save as. And now I've got this under documents Bentley. What I could do is change where I have it at. I'm going to put it up on uh, this PC, looking at my desktop. And that's what I want to do is I want to put it there. So it's going to give me all of the files that you're going to need to hand in for this assignment. So I just saved it all there. And if I come over here to my desktop, you can see that here's lesson number one, which is going to be all of these. I have one, two, three, four, five, six items that I'm going to turn in for my homework assignment. And in order for me to be able to run those, I'm going to need to have every single, sorry, run your model that you've made. I'm going to have to have all of those. This is what you're going to turn in. So that concludes lesson, quick start lesson number one. And don't worry about the fact that we have warnings, but hopefully that gives you all the information you need in order to complete the lesson.